Yeah, uh, so I came out here to shoot a biochar video today. <laughs> uh, first snow I think we've seen in a year and a half out here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Anyways, today we're talking about biochar myths, misconceptions, stupid comments that I always hear, <laughs> stuff that just doesn't make any sense. If you will understand the difference between putting biochar into soil, tilling it in for gardens and for flowers and for vegetables versus top applying biochar. Some pretty stupid stuff out there. So anyways, I figured I'd go ahead and do a video real quick just to explain it. So hold on. Yep. So <laughs> here we are. Before I get started on this biochar uh, myth sort of thing, I just want to go over real quick a couple things. Make sure, well, number one, subscribe course hit the subscribe and that way you can be involved with our giveaways we do but pre-emergent I just want to tell you real quick we've had huge amounts of rain and soils are absolutely just saturated saturated and if you're going to be putting down a pre-emergent anytime I really want to make sure that you're not putting it down on a super saturated soil I want you to make sure you put your pre-emergent down when you have three or four days of dry so your upper layers can dry out so when you put your pre-emergent down it's actually going to wet it then it's going to soak into the soil right now my lawn is actually squishing as i walk on it if i put pre-emergent down now and wet it in there's a good chance i'll have a lot of leaching and that pre-emergent is going to run off so remember when you put down your pre-emergent which i've already ordered mine and it's sitting in my garage don't get caught off guard there's a link in the description below that will link to the granular pre-emergent which is step number one uh, you put that pre-emergent down make sure you order it early because it always runs out people start screaming because they can't get it order it early but also make sure that you've had three or four days of dry kind of sunny weather where that first inch or two of your soil is not saturated that's an important note all right let's talk about this biochar miss um, I spent the past two days sort of working on a page and it's in the description below. Go to that link in the description, it'll take you to our website, there'll be links to the pre-emergent humichar and all this information will be on there about myths and misconceptions and understanding the difference between top applied biochar and garden soil biochar which is tilled into the ground. And I think it's a pretty good way to learn the difference between the two and why do I do that? It's because I always get, you know, you get, uh, welcome to YouTube, you always get stupid comments down below, but I'll give you, a, there's an example of a guy that said, you have to, you have to pre-charge your biochar, and if you don't pre-charge your biochar, it's going to suck all the nutrients out of your soil. <laughs> Not true. Absolutely false. And that's the kind of crap that goes around on YouTube that gets spread around. It's just not true. There's a huge difference between taking biochar and tilling it into the ground 12 18 24 inches that's the normal that's what the majority 99 percent of the studies that's what the studies have been focused on tilling biochar into crop production vegetation all that kind of stuff the difference between that and top applying biochar which we have spent the past at least eight months maybe a year studying the difference between the two and how that works let me give you the simple explanation. Now, if you go to the page, as an example, I think it's, you'll, you're gonna see something like that. And there's like three pages of that, that go over um, all the differences and help you understand the difference between the two, between top applying biochar to turf versus tilling it into the soil. The main thing being is when you till it into the soil, yes, that is true. You want to put it inside of a mulch. You want to add organic matter, have the nutrients available, and you leave it and let it preload itself with nutrients, microbes, fungi. Um, it gets preloaded. Then you take that mixture and you till that into your garden soil. When you put a plant in in year one, it'll receive the benefits in year one. You don't have to do that, but what will happen is, is you really won't see a lot of benefits until the second year. That's what all the studies have found. When you're top applying a biochar, that's completely different. Why is that? When you're top applying biochar, humichar is the only product on the market that is available in the DG particle that is super micronized that will actually be able to penetrate the soil. But you have to understand something. 
The only time biochar, and I put this on the website, the only time biochar can have an impact on a plant is when it's around the roots. 90% of the nutrients are taken up by the roots, so biochar only affects a plant when it's surrounding the roots. Well, if you're top applying biochar, if it's not micronized, it's never going to make it past the thatch layer in year one, by the way. But our product, or the Humichar product, actually goes right down to the soil level. Now, it's going to sit in that thatch layer and in that soil layer for a couple of weeks. And what's it going to do while it's there? What else is there? Our fertilizer is there, microbes, fungi. Everything else is down there in that thatch layer, right below that thatch layer. And the biochar will actually pre-charge, pre-load, and inoculate itself as it slowly moves down into the soil. So it's gonna move down. Now here's the funny part about this. It can't suck soil, suck nutrients out of the soil because it's slowly working down. In your roots, are your, if you have Bermuda grass, they're gonna be eight inches, 16, 24, up to 40 inches deep on Bermuda grass. And so you've got this little teeny layer up top of biochar. We have found, measuring this stuff out here, we have found that biochar typically moves, only moves when it's top applied, only moves about an inch to two inches per season down into the soil. So here's your biochar up here and here's all your roots. Is it really sucking out all the nutrients down here? No, it just, it just physically doesn't make sense. It's just scientifically, there's no scientific explanation for that comment. So it does not do that. So understand, when you top apply biochar to turf into lawn, you do not need to preload it or precharge it. That's a misconception. It'll preload and precharge itself. Keep biochar applications and fertilizer applications separate. They're two totally different things. We have a program for our fertilization. Every four to six weeks or whatever, we apply whatever, whatever. Your biochar is completely different. You wanna keep that program separate. So go to the website, go to the link below, read up about this, and understand the difference between the two. Um, and I just want to let you know that uh, I'm going to be doing uh, quite a few videos over the next couple of weeks. The next video I'm thinking about doing is probably going to be the pre-emergent video. I've already got 10 cases of pre-emergent sitting in my garage because I have to do four different lawns. So I've already ordered mine, it's in stock. Uh, when it was in stock, I've already got that. So just get a little head of the game. Uh, don't forget the Bermuda Lawn Guide. The Bermuda Lawn Guide has been out for a while. You need to go look at the Bermuda Lawn Guide. And that's a full year long program, step by step. The calendar is on the Bermuda Lawn Guide. Everything is over there on the Bermuda Lawn Guide. It walks you through. It talks to you about the new Jumpstart program. And the new Jumpstart program is basically what we're doing is we're getting our soil corrected and conditioned so that when our Bermuda grass wakes up, so let's say my Bermuda grass wakes up, you know, April 1st, let's say. It starts to wake up April 1st. Well, I'm gonna start doing conditioning to my soil here over the next couple of weeks where I'm gonna be putting down humichar and I'm gonna be putting down a little bit of soil correction, maybe some light 10, 10, 10. I actually have a different fertilizer I talked about in the last video on soil tests. Uh, I'll be putting that out. I'll be fixing my soil while my Bermuda's dormant. So it's snowing out here. It's 30, it's 32 degrees out here. It's almost noon. Um, am I out here fertilizing my lawn? No, I'm correcting and conditioning my soil at this point, you know, four, six, eight weeks ahead of time before this spring grass starts to spring up. That's what the Kickstart program, some people are getting confused. They're thinking that you're fertilizing your lawn. That's not what you're doing. Remember, we have had torrential rains here lately, and the lawns are actually, actually just absolutely soaked. Matter of fact, I had to go back in the back here and dig a hole under my fence and let this river water flood out of my backyard. That's how bad it's been, and we have more rain coming. So what's happening to your soil? Your soil is just getting leached and leached and leached, and so you're losing a lot of nutrients. You're losing a lot of organic matter, and that's kind of what we're doing. Um, as soon as this spell of rain over the next week stops, we're going to come out here and we're going to start to put down humichar. We're going to put down a little bit of 10, 10, 10. Uh, once the date gets closer for pre-emergent, probably around March 1st is when we're going to put down our granular pre-emergent. If I need to do any weed killing, 
now's a real good time to do some weed killing once the sun comes out and it gets a little warmer. Because why? Because our Bermuda's fairly dormant. I mean, it's not a, it's not totally asleep. It's not totally dormant, but this is a good time to come out. If you got to put something negative down, this is a good time to do it. Okay, so I finished shooting the video. I went in and ate lunch, and I came back out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a winter wonderland. A winter wonderland. Man, it's just gorgeous. Sorry, it's gorgeous. So anyways guys, head over to the website and read up on that article that I wrote down. I think it'll really kind of open your eyes as far as understanding the difference between subsurface applied biochar, top applied biochar, and really how a lot of the things that apply, a lot of the rules that apply to subsurface biochar, there's absolutely no physical way possible that they can apply to top applied biochar. It's a big difference. Anyways. Uh, I'm cold. I'm cold inside. Hit subscribe because uh, I got seven videos lined up prepping up for this new season. Talk to you later. Doc.